Hello there and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at reverse osmosis deionizing water purification. We're going to have a little look about how it works, what it does and why you would use it. So this is a reverse osmosis deionizing water purifier, commonly called RO or RODI water purifiers. They have a series of canisters, each of which has different media in there. And the basic premise of it is pure tap water goes in there and then out this end comes pure water on its own with no other contaminants, down to an amount that we'd find satisfactory for our own use. Now they don't remove everything from tap water, you do end up with a little bit left, a few little contaminants left at the end of the day, but it's far superior to just using tap water on, it, on its own. It will remove nitrates, it will remove phosphates, most of the hardness from the water. So at the end of the day, you're, you're left with a usable product which can go into an aquarium. So water is forced through this system under normal mains pressure via these tubes. Now they're colour coded so that when you set it up you know which part of the filter they're connected to. They're not always colour coded though, a lot of the time they're just white and then you have to figure things out. Um, but this particular system has colour coded pipe work so you can connect them up to the right part of the filter, it doesn't really matter. Nevertheless, they come in from the mains down this pipe work and the first canister they hit is a pre-filter. So this is a fabric filter and the basic reason this is here is to take out all of the large debris from the water. So all of the particles over a certain size get filtered by this and this particular filter goes brown quite quickly but it's doing a very important job because you don't want all of that rubbish to go through the next stages. Once it's gone through there the water then goes into this next bit and that is your carbon filter. So carbon does a lot of jobs, it takes out a lot of odours, take out chlorine, uh, take out some of the metals and bits and pieces in there. So that's your chemical filtration. So that's, that's quite good, it takes out quite a lot of the stuff, but it doesn't remove everything. And that's why we have this section here, and this is the most important part of this system. This does most of the work, and this is the reverse osmosis part. And that's what we can see there, that's the membrane. So the basic way that this works is it forces water out of a solution of other things through this membrane, and this membrane only allows water through, so water molecules, and then when it goes through the membrane, all you're left with is mostly water. There's still bits and pieces in there which you, this membrane won't take out, but it's mostly pure water. Now, not all of the liquid going into this filter actually makes it through the membrane. There's a little bit of overpressure um, and there's going to be waste as well. Um, there's going to be bits left over so all of the stuff that doesn't make it through the filter needs to go somewhere. So at the bottom of here there's basically a junction. One for the nice water to go out of and one for the waste water to go out of. So that's that part of the filter. Now on the end you'll see here we've got the two junctions. One of these is the waste, and that's that's this part here. So it flows up there, um, through there, and then that's your waste. So you attach another one of your tubes to that, and then that waste water will go down the drain, or you can use it for other things. So in a three-stage RO unit, that would pretty much be the end of the system. So you'd have this here, and that would be your RO water going out and you use it as it is. With this system it's a four stage. Uh, the fourth stage is kind of optional and you don't necessarily have to use it but it's the resin filter. Um, and you can see here why you have it. It's for removing the calcium and magnesium ions and it softens the water. So all the ions that the membrane in there can't take out it then goes through this fourth stage resin and that will take most of them out. Now this isn't massively necessary but it just makes the water a little bit purer if you do use it. So on this system this is our outlet here and that's where we'd collect our usable water from. So that's basically the overview of a system. They're quite simple. There isn't much to them. The only real maintenance you have to do is changing the membranes 
as and when they need to. I mean, this membrane will last around two years in there. The resin, I think, is six months to a year. Uh, and these two here is probably six months per one. So they can be a little bit costly, but that is if you're running them full time, all the time. A lot of the time, you'll want to turn them off when you're not using them. So there are quite a lot of varieties of RO units on the market. Uh, and huge price ranges. You'll find some um, which are really cheap, 50, 50 pounds. You'll find some which are really expensive, up to maybe three or 400 pounds, if not more. And a lot of that is to do with the amount of volume they can um, kick out. So this is quite a small unit. It does 75 gallons a day, and it's a fairly cheap unit. Larger, more expensive units will produce more water. So you have to judge which one you want depending on the size of your system and how much water you're going to be using. But also there is a difference in the quality of the membranes and things like that. So higher quality membranes will remove more of the rubbish from your tap water which you don't want to use. So why would you use an RO unit? There are a few important reasons. The firstly and the most common reason to use an RO unit is in marine systems. So marine systems you want to be as clean as possible in terms of contaminants such as nitrates, phosphates, silicates and heavy metals and things like that because they will, one, they will affect your coral. Uh, corals aren't too fond of nitrates and phosphates but also you get masses of algae in these systems if you overload them with those contaminants especially the silicates you get diatoms all the time so it's really important to use RO unit when you're doing a marine system and that's also applicable to freshwater systems so if you've got particularly bad tap water you can use RO water um, either you remineralize it or you, you cut your water with it so you do half RO and half tap water just to bring down the amount of contaminants in the water but also in terms of specialist fish, so by that I mean some of your specialist um, rift lake cichlids or your South American cichlids, things that like water within a specific parameter, whether it be highly alkaline, highly acidic, highly soft or hard or whatever, you basically want to start on a baseline level. So you start with your RO water, you know there's nothing in it, and then you can buffer it to the parameters that your fish want so it's pretty important when it comes to those specialized systems so that is basically your overview of what an RO unit is and why you would use it I hope this video has been helpful and a little bit educational if you'd like to see more of this kind of content please subscribe to my channel also if you've liked this video please remember to hit the like button below so thank you for watching and happy fish keeping